Hi everyone, welcome to Dentison. Today's video is on structure of dentine part 2 where we are going to discuss the details of the structure of dentine and we are also going to see how to write for your exams. But before that watch part 1 where we have discussed the basics of the structure of dentine so that you can understand this video easily. This video can be a long time because we are details to know details but watch till end because it is going to be an interesting video. So let's start. So structure of dentine can also be asked as histology of dentine for your exam where you have to write about 6 things. Dentinal tubules, peritubular dentine, intertubular dentine, pre-dentine, odontoplastic process and dentinal fluid. So let's start with dentinal tubules first. First their shape, if we magnify this area and see, so dentinal tubules, they start from pulp surface and they go towards the enamel on the outer side and in the crown and towards the cementum in the root portion. So they are taking S shape here. But as they reach the root tip, they become straighter. Root tip ke pas straight ho jati hai. Also as they reach cusp tip, again they become straighter. So we can say that these dentinal tubules, they start from pulp surface perpendicular to the pulp surface like this and they end at dentinum and enamel junction in the crown and dentino cemental junction in the root again they are ended perpendicular to these junctions and what is their shape yes they are s shaped as we can see here so it is also called sigmoid cores now if you can see here these s shaped tubules have two curves one curve this and then other one is this so it is also called doubly curved course so that is important why went entries question the shape is s shaped now these two curvatures are called primary curvatures of dentinal tubule again that can be important viva question and the first convexity that is this one first convexity of the tubules is always directed towards the root apex as you can see here it is always directed towards the root side so while drawing the diagram you have to keep this thing in mind and draw the first curvature towards the root apex and the here can be secondary curvatures too. So these small curvatures as you can see here are called the secondary curvatures which are minute regular sinusoidal curvatures present throughout the dentinal tubules and 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 as these dentinal tubules reach the root tips, incisal ledges and cusp they become straight. So in these regions they are straight. Let's talk about the branches. They have two types of branches. Let's draw. So the dentinal tubules from their lateral surface, they give lateral branches as we can see here and dentinal tubules where they end near the junctions, they give terminal branches. These green branches are showing the terminal branches. So lateral branches and terminal branches. So if we talk about the lateral branches, their diameter is about 1 micrometer or less and they start perpendicular to the main tubule as we can see here and in between these two lateral branches, the distance can be 1 to 2 micrometer so that we can say that every 1 to 2 micrometer length, there is a lateral branch and, and, and they are given a special name. They are called canaliculi or microtubules that can be your important interest and by our question, other name for lateral branches and you know these tubules, microtubules, they also communicate communicate with the branches from the adjacent tubule. Pass ki padi dentinal tubule ki branches ke saath hai network banati hai. Now if we talk about the terminal branches which are present near the terminal, they are more in the root portion compared to the crown portion. So they are more in the root dentine compared to coronal dentine. Let's talk about the length and this arrow shows the thickness of dentinal tubule. So it seems the length of the tubule is same as the thickness of dentine but it is not so. Why? Because if we straighten out this dentinal tubule then its length becomes more than the thickness of dentine. So we can say dentinal tubules are longer than dentine because they are curved. And what is the thickness of dentine? It is 3 to 10 millimeters and it is variable in more in boys than in girls increase during puberty also it is different for different types of teeth and also within the same tooth it can be different on different surfaces for example buccal surfaces dentine may be thicker than on the lingual surfaces now talking about the diameter of dentinal tubule before that we need to know the surface of dentine on the inner side and on the outer side where do you think it is more yes it is on the outer surface so outer surface of dentine to inner surface of dentine ratio is 5 is to 1 that means if the outer surface is 5 inner surface is only one times so we can say that on the outer surface dentinal tubules are farther apart that means dur dur padhe hain whereas on the inner side they are more closely packed bahut pass pass mein padhe hain kyunki yahan pe surface kam hai so where do you think diameter of the tubule is more on the outer or on the inner it seems it is more on outer but it is not so lag raha hai na bahar ki taraf zyada hoga but nahi hai so the diameter of the tubules is more on the pulp side that is 3 to 4 micrometers here whereas on the outer side it is less or equal to 1 micrometer 
why why so because here you can see a red thing that peritubular dentin as it forms inside the dentinal tubule it reduces its diameter peritubular dentin ki wajah se iska diameter chota ho jata hai bahar ki taraf so if we talk about the number of dentinal tubules per unit area where it is more on the inner on the or on the outer side number of tubules to same hai different kya hai area so on the inner side more number of tubules are present in less area right or we can say the density of the tubules is more on the pulp as compared to outer side this ratio is 4 is to 1 and there can be about 50000 to 90000 tubules in the near the pulpal area and this density is more in the crown portion as compared to the root portion now the second structure peritubular dentin so as the word says peri means around so this dentin immediately surrounds the dentinal tubule as we can see here and it forms the wall of the dentinal tubule so if we look at the thickness of this dentin here on the outer side and this on the inner side so where do you think it's thicker yes it is thicker on the outer side it is about 0.75 micrometers whereas on the inner side of dentin it is only 0.4 micrometers so 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 on the outer side actually it constricts the dentinal tubule dentinal tubule ko chhota kar deta hai jiski wajah se diameter on the outer side is that is near the dentino enamel junction becomes 1 micrometer so that is because of the peritubular dentin the diameter on the outside is less so you can see this is the diameter on outside and this is the diameter on inner side now because this mineral is deposited on the inner side of the wall of the tubule so don't you think the better term for this is intratubular dentin intra means inside yes so the more appropriate term is intratubular dentin intratubular dentin is another name for peritubular dentin and it is better term so if we compare this peritubular dentin with intertubular dentin which is present in between the tubules as shown here with the blue color which one do you think is most highly mineralized so it is peritubular dentin which is more highly mineralized than the intertubular dentin about 9% and it has different matrix composition how it has less collagen and more of non collagenous proteins such as dentin xyloprotein and dentin matrix protein 1 so to know the chemical composition of dentin in detail tap on the i button above for the video on same so this peritubular tubular dentin if we decalcify the section decalcify remove the calcium the peritubular dentin will gone so what will be left we'll just see the empty dentinal tubules with just the odontoblastic process or odontoblastic process surrounded by the empty space will be seen and 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 in the ultrastructure under the electron microscope a layer is seen on the inside of these dentinal tubule walls which is made up of organic material and it is called lamina limitans lamina means layer and that is important and just question and why a question what is lamina limitans it is a thin membrane made up of organic substance lining the calcified dentinal tubule wall it is rich in glycosamine glycans that is one concept another concept another investigator say that it could be actually the plasma membrane of the odontoblastic process वो भी तो पढ़ा है ना वहाँ पे सो सेकेंड कॉन्सेप्ट कैन बी इट इज द प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ और डॉन्टो प्लास्टिक प्रोसेस बट फॉर यू एग्जाम यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट इट इज द ऑर्गेनिक मटीरियल लाइनिंग द वॉल इंटर ट्यूबुलर डेंटिन इंटर मीज इन बिटवीन सो प्रेजेंट बिटवीन द डेंटाइनल ट्यूब्यूज एंड इट फॉर्म्स द मेन बॉडी और द बल्क ऑफ डेंटिन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट कैन बी योर एंट्रेस क्वेश्चन विच टाइप ऑफ डेंटिन फॉर्म्स द मेन बल्क ऑफ डेंटिन इट इज इंटर ट्यूबुलर डेंटिन एंड हाफ ऑफ द वॉल्यूम ऑफ दिस डेंटिन इज मेड अप ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक मटीरियल विच ऑर्गेनिक मटीरियल कॉलाजन फाइबर्स विच are tightly interwoven work so they are forming network as we can see here these black collagen fibers they are lying perpendicular to dentinal tubule so this is a dentinal tubule which they are forming so these fibers they are present perpendicular to these dentinal tubules and they are randomly oriented so the diameter of these fibers is 50 to 200 nanometer and they show cross banding of 64 nanometers which is typical of collagen so 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 when the mineral comes on these collagen fibers that is hydroxy apatite crystals that is of about 0.1 micrometer length so this mineral is deposited along the long axis of these collagen fibers that means parallel to these collagen fibers so in ke parallel hi long axis pe hi ye mineral deposit ho jata hai pre dentin pre means before so before dentin gets mineralized there is a layer which is always present adjacent to pulp tissue odontoblast pulp mein pada hai to ye jo hamari layer bani hai unmineralized dentin ki that is called pre dentin it is 2 to 5 micrometer wide and it is not mineralized very very important thing that you have to remember about pre dentin and when we see it under the stain section it stains pale so it is more pale staining than the mineralized dentin as we can see here it is lightly stained it is mineralized dentin is more darkly stained 
as the collagen fibers they get mineralized this pre-dentine is converted into mineralized dentine and a new layer of pre-dentine is formed from below around the pulp so new layer is formed circumpulpally so odontoblastic process what is odontoblast it is the cell which forms dentine it is present in the peripheral pulp as we can see here near the pre-dentine and pulp border so this is the border so this cell is present here and its process goes inside the dentine tubule which is called odontoblastic process so what is odontoblastic process cytoplasmic extension of odontoblast cell odontoblast cell ke cytoplasm se extension hai hai, that is odontoblastic process and 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 other name for this process is tom's fiber so in exam you may be asked about another similar term which is called tom's process which is actually the process of ameloblast cell if you remember this tom's process is responsible for rod and interrod enamel so it is the process of ameloblast cell whereas tom's fiber is the process of odontoblast cell so that is the difference so odontoblast cell length is 40 micrometers and diameter is 7 micrometers and if we look at odontoblastic process its diameter near pulp is about 3 to 4 micrometers whereas into dentine it is 1 micrometer so it reduces as it goes inside the dentine so we can say that the odontoblastic process is half the size of odontoblast as it enters the dentinal tubules now let's talk about the extent of these processes they do not extend to the entire thickness of dentine in some regions odontoblastic process may go up to the entire dentine whereas in others it may be shortened because of the deposition of mineral like this so where it goes to the entire thickness of dentine sometimes it can cross even the dentino enamel junction and go into the enamel there it is known as enamel spindle so to know more about the details of the enamel spindle you can tap on the i button above for the video on same so what is present inside these odontoblastic processes micro tubules and small filaments so what is not present they do not have organelles which are actually present in the cell so sometimes they may have organelles like mitochondria lysozymes vesicles sometimes may be seen and 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 these odontoblastic processes also have side branches or lateral branches as you can see here like the, there, is, there are lateral branches of dentinal tubules these lateral branches of odontoblastic process extends laterally into the adjacent dentinal tubule saath wai padi dentinal tubule ke andar ghus jati hai so laterally into the dentinal adjacent dentinal tubule then last is dentinal fluid where is it present inside the dentinal tubule and it is also known as dental lymph that is another name for it and important entrance question so as you can see here it is present and around the odontoblastic process and where is it coming from it is coming from the pulpal capillary blood through their ultra filtration so it is ultra filtrate of pulpal capillary blood and it is considered a transudate and what is its role it's important for pulp dentin communication a pulp or dentin communication ke liye important hai whenever there is any external force external factor there can be rapid movement of this fluid which can lead to dentin sensitivity so sometimes you might have felt dentin sensitivity that is due to the movement of dentinal fluid in the dentinal tubules now we come to the summary of the structure of dentin so you have to remember two diagrams for your answer so this is the longitudinal section and the cross section diagram so in the longitudinal section diagram you can just show the dentinal tubules where you can say that these are s shaped dentinal tubules starting from pulp surface at right angle in reaching the dentino enamel junction and dentino cemental junction again at right angles they have primary curvatures which are two first one is towards the root apex and along the entire length they have secondary curvatures then they have two types of branches lateral branches and terminal branches then their length is more than the dentine and their diameter is more near the pulp that is about three to four micrometers as compared to on the outer side which is one micrometer and then we can talk about the two types of dentine that is intertubular and peritubular peritubular dentine is also called intratubular dentine and it is more mineralized intertubular dentine is present in between the dentinal tubules and it is forms the bulk of the dentine then you can talk about pre-dentine pre means before mineralization of dentine so it is unmineralized and it is always present near the pulp odontoblastic process is the cytoplasmic extension of odontoblast cell it is also known as tom's fiber and dentinal fluid present inside the dentinal tubules is also known as dental lymph and is important for dentine sensitivity so that is how you can remember the structure of dentine these two diagrams are very very important let's check what have you learned look at these two diagrams and there are two sets of questions first you have to match the following shape of dentinal tubules first convexity is towards the dentinal tubules are straight at which areas 
they show off outer surface of dentin to inner surface and lateral branches of dentinal tubules are known as second side is fill in the blanks which type of dentin forms the dentinal tubule walls which is the dentin present in between the dentinal tubules what is other name for a odontoblastic process what is present inside the periodontoblastic space and what is the term used for unmineralized dentin so do let me know about your answers in the comment section below and if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button keep watching keep learning and good luck for your exams see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye